So how do you go about checking for mites in your beehives? In this video, we'll show you how to check for varroa mites in your beehives in one simple step. Coming up. If this is your first time to my channel, welcome. I'm Doug the Bee Guy. My mission is to help beginning beekeepers have an extraordinary experience in beekeeping. We're going to show tips, tricks, and tutorials about beekeeping to help you get the most out of your bees. Consider subscribing if you want to be a better beekeeper and hit the like button if you like this video. Now let's get started. So what we're going to use to uh, do the uh, mite check in our beehives is we're going to use this little uh, modified dirt devil um, vacuum cleaner. Um, we've added a little ball jar down here on the bottom and uh, you can go to Randy Oliver's uh, website. I'll put the link down in the description if you want to learn how to make one of those. Um, he's got directions. I actually uh, saw it on uh, Ian Stepler's um, a Canadian beekeepers blog and I just uh, figured out how to do it myself by looking at his. But uh, we'll get you some directions. Then you use uh, isopropyl alcohol, rubbing alcohol. You put that in the jar, and then when you shake it, the bees uh, release the mites. It does kill the honeybees, but if you don't check for mites, you're probably going to lose your bees anyway. This is uh, the jar that we're going to dump the uh, bees into. Actually, the bees stay in this jar. We're going to tip it, and the alcohol and any mites that come off will be in here. And you can actually buy this little device here, but I made one. It's just two ball uh, rings with a spring, and I'll put a link to one that you can buy that has the two jars. It's already done. But uh, this is the equipment we're going to use to do the mite thing. So what we're going to do to do our mite test is we're going to open this hive up. You can see these are all natural hives, lots of weeds. Um, and we're going to try to take a sample from right here in the in the middle of the brood chamber. This is a double brood box. It's actually uh, two nukes side by side. So I'm going to take a sample from each one. But you want to take about a quarter cup of bees, which is uh, oh, about that high in your jar. Um, this is the jar we're going to dump them into but so we got our our alcohol to about that level we're going to suck the bees up and then we'll shake them and then we'll do a mic check but so the first thing is we got to do uh, we got to open our hive and uh, got our smoker going here this is the end of the fall flow probably got another week or so of goldenrod so the bees are pretty pretty mellow they're bringing in tons of goldenrod pollen and nectar and uh, beautiful day out today, probably about 85 degrees, pretty warm, about, uh, about 15 degrees warmer than normal for this time of year here in northwest Indiana, United States. But we got lucky this year, so we'll take it. So we're going to take this uh, honey off. We haven't harvested the honey yet, the fall honey. That's okay. We'll get to it here in a couple of days. It's going to be uh, sealed on here pretty tight. We haven't gotten into this hive in a while. So, they're propolizing everything heavily right now for winter. Preparing. Pull this off, put it aside. Look down in here, give them a peek. They look pretty happy, pretty full. I'm going to pop this.
So you have your choice. If you have a double Jeep, you could do the from the bottom or the top. I've opened several of my hives in the last couple of weeks. I found that most of the brood is in the bottom and they're backfilling the top. So I'm going to take the nurse bees from this area because I believe that those are closer to the brood than maybe up here. But you know, with this device, it's pretty easy. You can suck some up from up here. You just want to watch it, you don't get your queen. So that's about half of the bees that I want to get. So I'll turn that off, set it down, and I can close this hive back up. And then I'm going to do the other side the same way. Since these are double side by side, that's kind of how I run my bees for these new And again, I'm going to do the same thing back here. You won't be able to see it. I can see uh, quite a bit of brood down there. Two to three frames. So that's good. I'm watching my bee level there. looks to be about right. So that's all there is to that sampling. That's why when you use the vacuum you can do it really quickly. I like this method because uh, I have lots of hives and I'm really busy. And I don't have time to pull the frames and shake them into the little tub and do all that. Um, that's a great method if you want to look up some videos about doing that method. I'll put some links in in the description um, there's nothing wrong with that method but if you want to do it quickly um, you can do this this honey back on it's not quite full you can see it's fairly light this time of year but I believe these swarmed and so we didn't get a lot of honey out of this one, but that's okay. Sometimes that happens when you're busy. So to recap, what you really want to do is get your nurse bees from the as close to the brood as you want. If you want to take the frames out and suck the nurse bees right off the frame where there's a brood, that's probably the best way to do it. But you can do it like this nonetheless. And so there are the bees. So what we're going to do, find a place where this won't fall, take my gloves off, a little easier to do. I'm just going to unscrew that, put our other device on, then we're going to shake those up. And you want to agitate them for quite a while. Um, at least a minute probably because the mites actually are attached quite a bit to the to the honeybees and uh, if you want to do this process with the powdered sugar um, then you will then your bees will survive uh, the problem with that is the powdered sugar doesn't uh, isn't a, as effective of releasing the mites so you might not get a count as accurate as you think it is and that's what all the scientists are saying. Shake the alcohol down there. 
as you can see it's very dirty I'm not sure if you can see this I'm gonna try to focus on this jar but what I found is two mites two mites in here so we've got our alcohol now I'm going to pour it into this jar with the paper towel in it and that's going to let the alcohol through and it's going to catch any uh, mites or debris all right, let's pull it out of there and see what we got. And so that's just an indication of where your mite levels are at. So it's not zero, but it's not five or 10 or 20. So we found two mites and uh, approximately 300 bees. That's what a quarter cup is. So if you do the math, 2 divided by 300. Um, you're at point, uh, 0.66, so you're not even at one uh, mite for your threshold. So um, typically, um, they tell you that if you're at five, you should treat. Um, three, some people treat. Some people treat at one. You know that's personal preference. Um, but the whole point of this video is just to show you how to check for mites so you can get a baseline um, of the number. So you should do this in the spring, and then as your hive progresses, um, this is the fall, so I'm pretty happy with uh, 0.66 um, in the fall because uh, typically, you know, that's when you have a really high uh, mite count, and you might have a panic mode. You might get five or 10 uh, mites in a sample like that. And then, then you know, that you, you have a really bad infestation and this hive is gonna crash, and probably die by November. It looks great now, there's tons of pollen, everything's fine, but if you have that kind of mite level, as soon as the brood is gone, all those mites jump on the back of the bees and they suck the life out of them and literally you can come back here in November, do your final check, you know, make sure everything's tidy for winter and these guys will be dead. And that's the frustration with mites. So that's why this mite, uh, mite check is so important. Um, you may even be a you know, treatment-free beekeeper that's not going to treat, but you should still test to see where things are at so that if the hives do die, you can say, well, yeah, I checked that one and that one was pretty high and maybe that strain isn't good or maybe I'm going to do something different or maybe I'm going to try something a little different, um, some other kind of uh, soft treatment or, you know, whatever. Just do the mite check for your own edification to see where your levels are and uh, I think it'll help you a lot. It'll definitely help new beekeepers understand how the mites can grow and this time of the year in the fall they grow at a tremendous rate much faster than the bees and that's why your hives will crash and die and then you'll come back in the, in the spring and go oh man I lost my bees what am I doing and so this is probably the number one thing that new beekeepers miss is they think well I don't see the mites I don't see them on the bees I'm gonna pray for the best and hope for the best and in the North America, that just doesn't work anymore. We have such a mite infestation in this part of the world that you really just can't look the other way unless you want to buy new bees every year. And that's, that's great for the package bee industry or the new manufacturers. If you don't want to do it and you want to buy new bees, that's great. But if you want to try to get some bees that propagate and then maybe you'll split them next year and they get big and you can see what a real hive does after the first year and how big they get, um, you might want to think about doing some kind of treatment and uh, we'll put some other videos up about what to do for treating right now we just wanted to talk about getting the sample and uh, getting a baseline and understanding um, that you probably have mites even if you think you don't so if you enjoyed this video please like and subscribe give it a thumbs up share it especially with new beekeepers who think you know that they don't really want to deal with it it's getting late in the season um, it's not too late. You can still um, check your mites. Still plenty of time to treat, especially if you find a mite count of 5 or 10 or 12 in a sample like that. You, you have to do something because the hive won't survive um, if you find that many mites in that small of a sample. 
Um, the other thing you can do is you can do multiple hives. Um, I did two. This is a side by side, but you might want to do, you know, 10 or 15 percent of your apiary. Uh, I, I have a lot of hives, so I do a small sampling, about 10 or 15 percent. Um, if you have just five or six, you might want to do all of them. You know, you saw it didn't take that long. Even the even the manual method where you take a quarter cup of bees out of a out of a bin doesn't take that long if you only have a few hives. You can do it in an hour, less than an hour, probably half an hour if you have some help. So it's worth doing and I hope you enjoyed this video and please post your comments below whether you liked it, whether you're not, whether you treat, whether you don't. And uh, as always, be extraordinary. <laughs>